Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate NetAcad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. We're going to be working on lab 3.2.11, exploring processes, threads, handles, and the Windows registry. That does mean we need a Windows VM. So just like our other lab, we have our security onion, we have our workstation. Well, where do we get the Windows 10 ISO? What we're going to do is go to Microsoft and download it from them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do Windows 10 ISO. The first one, again, Microsoft they will have you download a tool called the Windows 10 installation media tool. You may get a warning message, go ahead and keep it. And then open the file. Because it is an executable, it will uh, prompt you for admin credentials if you don't have them. This process can take a few minutes or take a little bit longer than that. Once we get through the initial portion, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you don't have to watch it download. Read through the terms and services. It will look at the hardware configuration of your machine to determine what type of Windows 10 it should pull. And sometimes this takes a little bit. I want to create the installation media, USB, DVD, or ISO. If you don't want to download this, you can uncheck it and you can then select what option? I'm going to go ahead and do Windows 10 64 bit. That's fine. I want the ISO. And then it'll ask me for a download location. I'm going to rename it to Windows 10 Pro. Hit save. And Pause the video because this can take a few minutes or longer. Alright, so that didn't take too, too long, but I now have my Windows 10 ISO. It will do some cleanup and then close. In VMware, we want a new virtual machine. We want to go ahead and mount the ISO. You can also browse to it, kind of depends on how you want to do it. Windows 10, that's fine. Make sure the destination is the appropriate destination. I'm going to go ahead and be putting mine in a VMs folder. Alright, hitting next. Keeping most of the basics. I do have additional memory and whatnot, so I'm going to go ahead and put this to 4 gigs. Go and hit finish and let it create its Windows 10 machine. We're going to be using this Windows 10 machine for a few labs, more focused on exploring the Windows 10 environment. You may get a few prompts, go ahead and ignore them. If you uh, get a timeout or a continual black screen, Alt Control Insert. And when you get this press any key, make sure to press the key. That will load or it'll boot off of the ISO that you had already mounted. If you uh, hit too long and hit spacebar, it doesn't boot off the disk, but it boots off of a different media. All right, so we have our Windows set up. Click on Next. Click on Install Now. And it will do its process. It will take a few minutes to, to run through it and pretty much the defaults are 
fine. I don't have a product key. I do want to do Windows 10. I accept the terms and services. If you uh, try to do an upgrade, it won't work. You have to do a custom. Next. And it will copy, install, and prep. And it will restart a few times. And the VM will be fully created. You just have to be patient while it does this process. Again, it goes as fast as it wants to go. All right, so it's done installing. It will restart. At this point, you don't do anything. You just sit back, let it do its thing. It will start prompting you for some details here shortly. It copied all the contents it needed from the ISO. So it's starting services. It is wrapping up the installation from the first load. Fun part is this takes as long as it takes. Alright, so once it's done loading that screen, it may restart a few times. Again, not that big of a deal. We're just waiting for it to finish its process before it starts prompting us to do some user inputs. Again, you should notice the screen may change sizes. The uh, Windows logo might, again, change uh, sizes as well. You just have to be patient with it. Alright, so it's loading the next portion now giving us just a moment all right so after that first screen we get is the select your region us is fine select the keyboard i'm doing us i'm skipping a additional keyboard and for our purpose we don't need to do a Microsoft account or we don't need to do anything above what a basic install is going to be we're just going to be using this to explore a little bit of Windows features and that is all it will go through and finish setting up the items that it needs before it prompts us for the next few items All right, so next one is we're setting this up for personal use. I'm going to go ahead and this is a Microsoft account. I don't want that. I want this offline account. Limited experience. Student. I don't want a password. you can turn or turn these off for our purpose they don't matter go ahead and skip all of this if you want Cortana I'm gonna skip it for now and it is prepping our desktop just got to be patient let it do its thing and it will load what it needs to load and then it will provide us our desktop so we can start the lab it may take a few minutes so again be patient with it all right so it will finally fully load and it gives us our desktop so from there we have a completed install version of windows and we can now start working on the lab all right, to make this a, user, a little bit more user friendly, I'm gonna go ahead and maximize it. If the screen doesn't auto resize, you can go ahead and install VMware tools. That will make this just a little bit easier. Look all the extra stuff that popped up. Okay. 
complete is fine. Typical would have been fine as well. It's the complete gives us a few additional drivers that make things run a little bit smoother. All right, so this should install and then it should uh, refresh. And you'll notice, there it goes. Our screen is now regular size, full size. Nope, we're not gonna restart. All right, so our lab is actually going to be exploring the process threads handles and windows registry it's broken up into three main parts exploring processes threads and handling and windows registry we're going to go ahead and download system internal suite inside of our vm so i have the instructions just off the side of my screen we have to run through the initial stuff with Edge because that's the default browser. You can Google system internals. You can download it off of the link in the lab. Uh, again, multiple ways to do this. So once you download, go ahead and click on open. And you'll notice it's just a bunch of tools. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my downloads folder because it downloaded as a zip file. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract everything. And that way they're all open and I don't have to worry about uh, having to unzip them one at a time as I'm using them. All right, while well, it's doing that, step one, done. Step two is exploring an active process. So we're gonna open up the system kernels. We're gonna extract all the files. We're gonna be using the prosx.exe. And again, we'll accept the, the appropriate licensing and we should start seeing the processes so we'll go ahead and we'll run through that all right so you'll notice the extracted files gives us an unzipped folder we're going to be loading the pros exp.exe so you'll notice here there's two Pros exp and pros exp 64. We do have a 64 bit OS, but the lab does say pros exp, so that's what I'll load. Set terms and services. Minimize that, and here it is. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. I'm not fully maximize it, but readjust it so we can uh, look at some details. So here we have our process IDs. Here are our processes and the tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Edge. Minimize it just so that it's there. Find Edge in our list. Here we have our smart screen. Here is our Skype. Here are the other services. We're going to go ahead and drop down. All right, so here is MS Edge. And then here are the additional components. I'm going to go to Google. All right, minimize it. And you'll notice, again, they don't list the active website. More than likely this guy right here, because that's the one that has the uh, most data. But 
this is our chrome we can kill per tab if we want this is also a search button up here if we wanted and as we mouse over things we get more detail all right so let's go and let's kill we'll right click kill process if you kill a child you'll notice it doesn't close out of Chrome these are all children of this main process they're all underneath this main process so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kill the main process and you'll notice Chrome closes all the way so we've done the thing find the Windows process we've done the kill we uh, killed the process it closed the program moving on to step three we're gonna start a new process we're gonna go to the command terminal and we're gonna go ahead and drag the Windows find process icon into the command prompt All right, so what I'm going to do is start CMD. First things first, we see the parent, we see the child. We're going to drag the find Windows process icon into the command prompt. All right, so what it's talking about is if we have a few things that are open and we click on our find process and we drag it over to something, it will identify the application. You'll notice that I mouse over edge. It takes us to the parent. So there is a nice way to use the find process so we can see what's there. So I closed Edge and you'll notice Edge is still open. It's still working on closing. It does take a few minutes. Uh, the process for the man prompt. So we'll go ahead and we'll mouse over it again. It is stored under Windows System32 command.exe that is the location of it. Its parent is Explorer EXE. All right, I'm going to go ahead and kill Edge because it should have closed already, but it didn't. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to ping something. So. I'll do it with attack T, so it's a continual. And you'll notice it gives us what command we're running, ping.exe. When I stopped pinging, it turned off. So when we're running a command, we're actually seeing the command underneath our parent of command.exe. If we do in a lookup, again, in a lookup is the command, ping, traceroute, all of those are commands that are ran. All right, so as we're doing this, we start noticing, I'm going to go ahead and close up my command prompt. Some of these are just weird. If we review a list of active processes and we find child processes, we may find weird processes like dwm.exe. It doesn't give me a description, not quite sure what it is. We're going to open up Edge and we're going to go to Virus Total. I can spell, I could have just typed 
virustitle.com, but I didn't. What I want to do is I want to search. You could do this a few different ways. We could uh, type in a file. We could put a website. We can drop the file in. From our processes, if we right click, we have the search online option as well. Alrighty, so we have our command terminal, we have our different machines. If we right click, we can see check virus total on some of them, not all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and on my con host, check virus total. You'll notice what we did was we sent the hash to virus total. We don't get a prompt, we don't get a pop-up, we just get a link. If we click on the link, it will load virus total where we can look at the details, the summary, the details of the AVs, the specific details, the hash values, the history of the file, the, the nitty gritty details of this program, the imports, all of that. So we have now completed this portion. If we kill our con host, what happens? It will close our terminal. So from there, we're going to move on to the next section. Next section is exploring threads and handles. We're going to go ahead and look at our threads. If we go to view, go down to lower pane, we have our handle. It was already selected, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to it. It's down here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our terminal again, even though it said to close it, ping 8.8.8. Want to right click our con host, go to properties. We're going to notice it gives us the properties of this file. We get an image, we get the virus total portion down here, with the ability to kill the process. We get performance details, processor, memory, I.O., handles. We get our performance graph, GPU, thread graph as well. If there's some form of connectivity, we show it here. Security are the users. Environment are going to be specific details about this file. And then our strings, which is more of if we're doing defer. All right, when we do still connected to con host, when we look at our handles, we can see directories, we can see files or registry keys, we can see threads and things like that. So there's a lot of information there. So when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and close out of this and out of our command terminal we're going to look at exploring the registry. Since we looked at keys, let's look at the registry. So if you go to start, type reg, edit. You'll notice there are five main keys. Class root, current user, local machine, users, current configuration. Make this a little simpler. The class root is actually the class subkey of the H key local machine software. It just kind of links to it. It stores the information used by the registry applications like file extension association, the program ID, class ID, and interface ID. The current user H key contains the settings and configuration of the users who actually are currently logged in. That means there is a user section for the user currently logged in that will load the data into the current user portion. 
If a different user logs in, that portion will change. We have a local machine, and that's going to be the configuration information specific about that local machine. All users are stored underneath HQ users, and this will contain the settings and configuration of all the users on that machine. We have the current user, which we've already talked about, but current user is a sub key of users. So even though current user is a top level key, it's actually also a sub key of the H key users. Lastly, there is the current configuration and that stores the hardware details that are used at boot up on the local machine. So let's look at the power of our registry. So here I'm going to open up Prosex. It loads up, no problem. We accept a term and services or the end user license agreement once already. So it's that acceptance is saved. What we're going to do is we're going to look at current users, software, system internals, process explorer, and you'll notice there's a lot of data here, but we're going to be looking at ULA accepted or end user license agreement accepted. It's currently flagged as one. If you double click on it and you change that to zero, click OK. It updated the value. If you open up Process Explorer again, changing that one to a zero affected the program. It basically reverted the end user license agreement as if we didn't accept it. We accept it, and you'll notice it opens it, but more importantly, it should show the new value. If you double click on it, it will show the correct value. This doesn't always get refreshed. If you click out of it and click back into it, you'll see that it's refreshed. So we've covered a good amount of material in this video. We looked at Oh, that decided to minimize everything. Let's try that again. So, in this video, we looked at processes. We looked at threads and handles. We looked at the Windows registry at a very low level. I've already done separate videos on the registry, so again, the point of this was just to get you to explore certain features of the Windows operating system. So again, this was lab. 3.2.11, exploring the processes, threads, handles, and the Windows registry. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be, one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy, and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.